A year ago, I was shocked as I entered a city of walking zombies. Thousands of addicts live on the street, openly shooting dope in broad daylight. Living conditions are worse than most third world countries, with many losing limbs on a near daily basis. This absolutely broke my heart, and I knew I had to come back to try and do more to help. So I am back here in Kensington again, and God has really blessed us tonight. We literally have a whole block of people that want to get clean and sober, that want help, and these guys have been nothing but amazing. I've met some of the most talented freaking rappers I've ever met tonight, dude. It's the real man. life little Wayne right here. Listen to facts, I was just at my mother while she smoking crack. Damn. Oh, pretty oh. this rap. Never in life will go make it relax. Wow. My mom was tripping, cause when she was tripping, she left me in traps. Damn. She just wanna listen, the plug was too vicious, the plug was my dad. Whoa, these niggas worse than the racist. They tell me every day you will not make it. Fuck around, I had to take it. That was my family, we had conversations, but we act like we aren't related. My own mother was making up statements. I was five, I cried in the basement. At okay. the age of six, I started praying. Damn. Can't count all the days I was waiting, cause I thought she was coming to save me. Most the parents, they thought I was crazy. So they put me on three medications. I literally pray for God to give me a positive spirit and so people can see me with love and light in my heart. So what you said to me means the world to me. When he came out here, it's just you can all I can automatically tell within the first five seconds of meeting somebody whether you know I like them or not and you know it's how they you know tune in my spirit and it's just like walkie talkies if we not on the same frequency we're not all you gonna hear is static yeah you know so you ain't clicking came, you ain't vibing he, yeah he came here with the same exact numbers digital thing and it, I was able to hear him as soon as, as you know words left his mouth his energy like I, it was like something I was looking for deep inside because I was having mm. a writer's block because people out here it's like they're having a war of who can steal the most uh, I mean journals I go through it breaks my heart but it, I, I tell myself that that can't stop me from chasing my dream amen you know, bro I, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna turn into these people just to prove what I can be as Bad as them. Do you pray? At seven. Yes, I do. I prayed this pray? morning. Yes, I do. And you've been praying for God to give you a sign how to change I, your life? I've been praying. I, whatever God's doing in my life, and he's doing whatever he, he needs to do. I don't question him. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Weapon that is formed against you will yeah, prosper, and every tongue that rises against you, I will confute. That's why I don't fear when I come in here. I know I got God. Yeah, yeah, I know you all are my people. people. Huh? One. 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 You can hold on a second. I'm trying to change shit. Like, I was an addict. I was on the streets. I don't know your story, but I'm tired of how people look at us, look down on us, think we're stupid, think we're lazy. That's bullshit. The realest people I ever met are out here on the streets. I can already tell you have a beautiful soul inside you. you just been through some terrible shit. Just like me, I was a heroin addict for seven years. I've been clean for 10. So if you'd like to do an interview, I'd love to do an interview with you. And if you need any help, like you want to get out of here, you want to go to detox, you want to get a job, you want to go to sober living, I'm more than happy to help if that's something you're down to do. What's your name? Destiny. Hey, nice to meet you. Alive. Care if I give you a hug? That okay? Nice to meet you, huh? I know you've probably been praying, right? You've been praying for a sign? What are the odds this bald guy from Ohio is here doing a documentary for Netflix? It's been clean and sober. That's why I'm here. Help you. You got a phone number? Yeah. Let me get your number real quick, okay? What is, oh shit, they coming to party. You're going, you're coming. The birds want to get sober too. Sir, they said sir. this shit's for the birds. <laughs> I'm withdrawing right now. What all are you withdrawing from? Um, opioids. Okay. Um, heroin. I see you like you're shivering, right? Are you cold? Yeah, I'm sick. Can you tell people like for those that don't know, you and I obviously know, but what happens when you're sick like this? Um, you basically your stomach gets really sick. You throw up. You shake. Your legs hurt. Um, yeah, pretty much all that. It's like basically the flu without having the flu. Yeah. I always tell people, like, I compare it to, like, the worst flu of your life multiplied by 10. Yeah, like, she's on day one, but, like, if you go th two, three more days, you're going to be dying. Really you're not going to be able to walk yeah, and stuff, right? Do it, yeah. uh, how long has it been since your last use? Um, for, uh, yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're a full 24 hours yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yesterday. As you can see, like, this is what people go through, and this is why I tell people we need help. We need resources. I know. It's getting low. Um, but this is what we need to you know resources for because how is she gonna get sober on her own she can't like it's it's too hard like imagine the worst flu of your life multiply that by 10 and then imagine you could take one Tylenol to feel better yeah. you'd be tempted to take that damn Tylenol wouldn't you yeah correct you would that's how I was too I could not detox off of 
dope on my own, you know? Yeah, like, she know. clearly, if she wants to get clean, needs a detox. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, we can still be friends, even yeah. if you don't want to, but okay. is going to treatment or going to detox something you'd be interested in in the future? Um, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Something I would be recommended to do, yeah. You know, you, you know, this might be a sign from God, dude. Like, I can literally get you into a good detox so you're not withdrawn. They're not going to give you bullshit meds. They're going to make sure you're comfortable. Sorry. I got you, you My okay? My bad, yeah. Okay. They're going to make sure you're comfortable. They're going to put you in rehab. They're also going to help you with any mental health issues or trauma you have. Like, I don't know you, but you've probably been through some shit just like yeah. me, right? Yeah, right. Can you tell us a few things that led to you using, like, some um, of the stuff you've been through? Yeah, so basically bad relationship, bad childhood, you know, shit like that. When you say bad childhood, like, what do you well, mean by that? I mean, that? I don't want to say bad childhood, but, like, just, like, I've been through a lot as a kid. So, you know, that has a lot to do with my, you know... My usage. Have you been through any kind of physical abuse or sexual trauma in I mean, your life? Yeah, as a kid, yeah, I've been through a lot of that shit. That's know that uh, roughly 33% of women that are addicted to drugs have been raped or sexually assaulted at some point in their life. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's why, again, it's not just like, oh, you chose this. Like, no. did you choose to get raped as a kid? Did you choose to have your, you know, stepdad or whoever touch you at 12, like my ex who passed away from a heroin overdose? No, she didn't. Right. That's why we need to do this. Thank you. Is it is it dead? Okay, that's fine. I can finish on here. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Um, no, I, I really think that this is a sign from God. Like, if you've been praying, tired of this shit, dude, I can get you out of here. Just take my number and okay. get a hold of me. I really hope right, no, no that you do. I'm going to, um, do you have Facebook? Um, yeah, I do. I'm going to add you on Facebook. All right. When I post this, I want you to see yeah. everybody in the comments. Show her some love. Tell her how beautiful she is, how much potential she is, because I want her to see that and be motivated to go to detox. Like, she can do so much better. She can help other people, you know? Yeah, you really you. could. So I hope that this is your sign, your hand up, that we can get you a whole new life, okay? All right. God bless you, hon. You too. You guys know what I do every time before I come out here? I pray in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, that's cool. Like, I'm not one of those people who's going to say, if you're not a follower of Christ, you're going to hell. I don't believe that, but Christ works for me, right? I pray in the name of Jesus because Jesus said, anything you ask in my name will be given to you. He says that. He declares it. His, he says his followers will do the same miracles as him and greater still. And I've seen them, literally seen like the C part to get people help, right? So every time before I come out here, I pray for God's wisdom, guidance, discernment. I pray for him to fill me with the Holy Spirit, which... Wayne, Wheezy, my dude, that's why what you said to me means so much. Cause I meet you today, I wouldn't feel this feeling that this is the confirmation of what I should be doing. Hey, and you were just saying, you were just saying, right? Like you're praying to God looking for a sign, right? Yes, sir. So what are the odds that this bald dude from Ohio came to this block on this night to shoot a fucking documentary and offer you help so you can fucking get your bars out there to the world? That's a sign, 100%. Before you came. Really? I was just talking, talking about, about that. I was, yeah. I told him, I said, you can really become something. You he has talent. You want, bro. Incredible I don't put talent. anybody on camera without asking to, just so you know. You're going to have another one, too. Awesome. And awesome. he actually made me. So you guys were just talking about, like, looking for a sign? Yep. Can I you say said, that again? I said, I told him, I said, people are out here, I said, we're getting treated like Hold on, come a little closer. Trash. Because the phone won't be able to hear you. People treat us bad, I said. And oh, yeah, come over here. If you hear yeah. someone say, like, one little, you know, Hit him of encouragement. One exactly. Little so that's what you were praying about? That's what you guys were talking about amongst yourself is like, all we need is a little encouragement. Yep, all we I need thought, is a spark. I said you could say something to save someone's life out here. Maybe someone's having a bad day and you say like one little like thing of encouragement to change Amen. their day. That's how it their starts. Lives, their world. Yeah. Yeah. One thing. Bless me because I started out just trying to do one nice thing for somebody. Try and help one person, right? And you see me now. We got a whole block of people yep. here. Spin yep. it real quick. We got a whole block of people wanting to get sober, wanting to do interviews, wanting to get clean, right? Like, and that's all you guys needed, right? Yep. Like just somebody to and say, hey, I believe in you and this is how you do yep. it, right? Yeah. Because it seems like, it seems like daunting to try and do it on your own, right? Like, you know, there's rehabs out there, you know, there's detoxes, but where do you go? How do you do it? How do you think that far ahead? I don't think about daunting tasks. I think about one step at a time. Yeah, just, just survival, daunting. right? Yeah. Getting enough money to eat, getting yeah. enough money not to be sick, yeah. not getting robbed, having a place to sleep because, you know, I came up <laughs> it's bad out here. Not getting robbed. I wear really? it every day. Because <laughs> when we're lost in addiction or lost in homelessness or mental health struggles, yeah. we can't see the forest through the trees, right? Yeah. We have so much chaos in our life that we would get help if somebody said, hey, this is how you get help from A to Z. This is how we're gonna do it, right?
up five felonies. Do you got any felonies or did you avoid them? Absolutely clean. Record clean. Hey, good for you, girl. <laughs> good for you. I just, at the end of my run, I just kept getting caught over and over again. Let me, let me ask you this. If I could get you into a good detox, full medical detox, get you into rehab, go to sober living, and, you know, help you get a job and shit, is that something you'd want to do? Yes, I would, yeah. How soon would you want to do that? Um, probably within the next month. This one, this I said to, like, five different people, the end of this one, I'm done. I want summer to be it. I want to be out here for the winter. Told you when I first met you, if you ain't ready yet or there's something else going on, we can still be friends. I ain't going to hate oh, on you. I get it. But I do got to counter you, and that's what I'm here I for, hear, right? I want to hear whatever you If say. you wait, you probably won't do it, right? And that's I, just how we are. I can give you a promise. You can give me a promise? Can you give me a pinky promise? Okay, promise bet. You. We'll lock in that All pinky this. promise. All That's what I'm here for, to give you that spark, sure. give you that yep. push, right? Because yep. at least when I was using for me, I would say I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to do it next month. Oh, it's my kid's birthday. Oh, it's there's Christmas. Always it's years. There's always something, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like it's never, quote unquote, a perfect time. There's other things you could be doing. But you've been out here for how long? Um, three years. You've been out here for three years, right? And I went home, but I come out and I sell drugs during the day and then go back home. Exactly. Um, you know what I mean? Back and forth. So, yeah, you know, so, it's really easy. Like those three days, a three day run can turn into three years, right? And, girl, I ain't about to let you go on another three year run or end up dead, right? So, we're going to come up with a plan and get you in treatment this week. Okay. You down? Yeah, I'm down. Run it. Here we go, everyone. Absolutely. This week? The pinky promise? Pinky promise. The pinky this promise. Week? We in it. We in it. I got Absolutely. to already, guys. Ooh. Amen. Doing an interview, and we got fucking somebody getting pulled over in the Tesla. I, you know, that's crazy. Oh, they got the wrong one? Damn, bro. Damn, they almost pulled guns on him. So this dude, this, they, they, they got the wrong guy. They, they got the wrong guy. Crazy, they had the paddy wagon, everything. Yeah, we literally had like four cop cars roll up at once right over here. Just in the middle of uh, the interview. And that's that's the kind of shit you see down here at Kensington at, uh, what is it, like 3 in the morning right now, bro? As no, I'm raw and real. I'm out here at 3 in the morning. Uh, the... The mayors and the block leaders were asking, like, why the fuck is this dude out here? Like, most of the people that do the interviews do it during the day, right? And I said, you know, they was probably shitting a brick. <laughs> shitting a brick, and I wasn't even the one getting pulled over. I just saw four squad cars roll deep. They got the paddy wagon and everything on them. I got this from being robbed the other day in Kensington, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and what happened to your boyfriend? <laughs> he was stabbed four times. He has uh, 90 some stitches. Holy shit, he's lucky to be alive, huh? Yeah. You huh. both are too. One I... was in the kidney, and then he has the other ones on his arm because obviously he put his arms up. Whew, yeah, y'all are both lucky to be alive. Believe it or not, guys, like she's the lucky one in this situation. She didn't get stabbed, at least. Like, does that happen often? Like, is there a lot of violence down here yeah. in Kensington? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What's something like people can do to try and avoid being robbed? Is it like don't pull your money out? Be careful, like what you're saying out loud. Trust nobody. Just stay away from Kensington altogether. <laughs> Hey, well, what did I tell you guys? Like, when dude asked me for rides, I was like, I didn't f park my car down here. Right. You know what I mean, bro? Like, I'm not trying to make myself a target. I wasn't born yesterday. I've been on the street for three months now, this time. Okay. What about before? Um, I was down here for four years. Four years. Bro. Yep. When I was 12, I found out that I was adopted and my dad wasn't my dad. Um, they, like, they lied to me the whole time, like, my whole my first 12 years. Um, that was very traumatic for me. Uh, it was devastating. It still kind of is. I don't know who my dad is. Never met him. Um, what stopped you from, from getting clean again after these last three months being out here? Um, honestly, I have an ESA dog, and I don't know anybody that I would trust to leave her with, honestly. So if you had somebody that could watch your dog, you'd go to treatment? Absolutely. So, girl, if I babysit your puppy for you, will you go get clean? I know. Will you go get clean if I babysit yeah. your dog? Really? Mm -hmm. Lock it in? Oh, man. Yo, nah, yeah. Show her some love in the comments, like, and that's again why I do what I do. How many people did we talk to tonight that said they've been looking for a sign or wanted to get clean? They didn't know where to start. Like, you wanted to get clean, but you don't got nobody to watch your dog, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's like the smallest thing. Like in the Bible, they say going the extra mile for somebody. Like, I don't even know if that's a mile. Like, I can just play with a puppy for a few months, right? That's and my baby. I've had her for six years. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. How soon would you be willing to go to treatment if I could watch your dog for you? Uh, within days. Days. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Did I get your number yet? No. Okay. Um. Make sure you got one of my papers. I'm gonna give you my number. Okay. 
get a hold of me tomorrow. Okay. My recommendation always is go sooner rather than later. Yeah. It's so easy to like say, hey, I'm going to go next week, and then it turns into next month, and then three yeah. months from now I'm back yeah. here again. Girl, what are you doing? You got two shiners this time, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want you getting stabbed next time. So, yeah, show her some love in the comments, guys. Wish her well. Um, one thing that my followers do that's really cool too is when they go to treatment, like people will send you like cigarettes or clothes or whatever mm -hmm. you need to. So that's like a real thing. You okay. know, so if you go to treatment, I can get you into treatment, into rehab, sober living, and help you find. That's a job why I said too. a couple of days, because I don't have any clothes or anything, because it was all stolen. Okay, so you'd be willing to go sooner if I can get you hooked up with some clothes and shit. Yeah, I don't have anything to go okay. with. Yeah, and hygiene and stuff. You get a hold of me to go out tomorrow. We'll get you a care package, get you some clothes, enough to start off the first week, okay. and then we'll get you more as you're in there. Okay. That sound good? Yeah, it sounds great. That's right. Can do that. So. Okay. As far as treatment goes, do you want to stay in this area or would you be willing to go further away? Uh, either or, probably. Either or. Yeah. Okay. Pray on it. My suggestion is is get farther away if you mm -hmm. can. You know it's hard to stay clean down here. If you really want to stay in this area, I can do that. But there's a great place in West Virginia that I work with that could be good. It's beautiful out there this time of year. Um, you could even work for them later I'd on. Like, like my they're really good. To come too. He can. Yeah, he okay. can. Now I'm not gonna lie to you. One's getting clean. You know. They... Yeah, yeah. You get you get clean for three months. Come back. He's using like yeah. you'll use too. Yeah. Right? Now I can get your boyfriend in with you too. Okay. But I gotta be real. Like you guys aren't gonna be able to like be snuggling in the bed oh, every night either. together. You know? <laughs> so as long as you're cool with that, you guys can go to the same place. Like you just can't live in the same room. The same place. I, I would like that, but it doesn't have to be. Dude, that's huge that she said that. Like most people like won't go if it's not the same place. And that makes it hard. There's very few places that'll take couples. Mm -hmm. I can find some sometimes. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot easier to get you in if I can just get you guys nearby each other. Yeah. And again, it's temporary, right? Like what's 30 yeah. days in rehab? Then you mm -hmm. can be in sober living by each other and hang out outside of sober living, right? Yeah. I yeah. still have resentments about it. <laughs> yeah, that's so why I was just going to ask you like if you've ever done therapy on that or anything. No, I don't think so. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but tell me if this sounds like it might be true. But a lot of us, the things that really bother us, and we tell ourselves maybe they don't bother us or we don't think about it, but a lot of times that trauma from childhood can be the reason why we continue to use years later. Yeah, do you feel like that's like part of the reason why you still use is some of those resentments and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, and that's where treatment is so huge because you go, you heal that pain and that trauma so you don't have to numb yourself with drugs or alcohol anymore. And then you can live, you know, a new life with, with freedom and with happiness. So we'll definitely get you set up, dude. Like, I'm okay. super excited for you. Um, okay. Thank you so much for coming out with me. Yep, get a hold of me tomorrow. Okay. We'll get it taken. I, I definitely Here. will. My wife got kidnapped down here. She got held for a couple days. It took hell to get her out. Pistol whipped twice. I've been jumped twice. It took me almost three days. When we found her, she was actually in the basement, tied up. They asked for 30000 is what they wanted. She had, she had access to money through her mother. So they'd use that against her. They did that much homework on her. Ain't that crazy? It's crazy. They held her for three days. I went crazy looking for her. Um, she was actually helping someone who was trying to cop, didn't know where to go. And someone asked her, and she took the person to the block, and she didn't come back. And I already knew there was something, something was going on. Um, I started floating around. I got a couple people sold. I was kind of given a description of her. I got a wind of a couple things. I went to the house, I knocked on the door, no answer, I went to another house, did it again, I went back, I kicked the door in, I didn't care, it's my wife, that's my wife. When I did finally find her, I had been pistol whipped twice, I had been jumped twice, it took me almost three days, when we found her, she was actually in the basement, tied up, yeah, and this happens on the right tied way. to a chair, like, like bound, to, hands behind her back, they stripped her naked, she, they actually put a piece of drywall up in front of her, she was they hidden. They didn't, they, I, but I'm guessing they were going to. Yeah. They, when I finally got her out, I literally I went in the basement of this place and all I hear is screaming and she wasn't there. She started screaming my name. And I just started, I could tell she was behind something, but they put new, literally put new drywall up. You just know what drywall is. Literally, dry, she's in the hospital. Um, and I started hit. I just started hitting the wall as hard as I could. So hitting the wall and a little piece of it popped off. And when it popped off, the, the voice got louder. And um, we started going at that wall and took it down sure enough tied up that's crazy bro it's horrible it's horrible that's why i need to go away gonna sell her into or make her a slave or something like something along there or body parts bro so they're kidnapping people and then selling their body parts on the dark web bro for real not everyone down you see with missing limbs is from use 
That's a fact. I know someone personally had their arm taken off. They would have one of the blocks ten dollars, and they took the dude's arm. Is after the whole kidnapping thing happened? Is that when you're like, you know what? I need to get f sober. Yeah, well, we were clean for six years, me and her, both of us, and uh, kind of during the end of COVID, uh, I was on Suboxone, and um, the clinic I was on, uh, they actually had like an outbreak of COVID, and they shut down. I didn't even have to go in the office. I was clean for so long. I would do like a telehealth interview, and my telehealth interview never came. I went down to the office. The office had boards on the windows, completely shut down. So I went from getting three Suboxone in a day, which I was taking as prescribed, wasn't selling, wasn't doing the funny shit, wasn't mixing nothing with it, to getting nothing. And I started buying them on the streets. After a couple days, I couldn't get them. What was right in front of me, of course. Three days prior to that, I was staying at Stop the Risk. It's an outreach program right by uh, the medicine shop. And uh, somebody busted in there and had me and my wife at point. Three days before this happened, there was a cop right out front. I went outside and said, yo, someone's got us at that point. My best friend got kidnapped July 3rd. We don't know where he is. I told the dude out. that dude has a to my wife's throat in, in the trailer right inside. He didn't believe me. He said, well, I didn't see him come in. I can shed some light to some of this stuff going on. You know, the people I was talking about earlier, Dan and Devin, that I helped. I don't know if you know Dan Henderson or, or Devin. They were like a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Dan and Devin? Yeah, I know. A video down here on Kensington about this time last year. I met them, thought they were awesome, had a lot of potential, got them into treatment. They're both clean for like a year now. That's awesome. That's They're both working at a hospital in Boston. They're peer like recovery to support people. They're That's helping people. I like to hear, man. Well, let's do the same for you, man. Let's make it happen, bro. Yeah, you're making it happen. Hey, for sure, man. Hey, if I give you my number, will you get a hold of me tomorrow? Absolutely. Anything I can do to help you, um, I will. Guys, show him some love in the comments. If you get me your information on where you're at in detox, we'll send you some clothes, some cigarettes, and stuff to help you out. This might not seem like a big deal to some people, but unlimited peanut butter and jellies on unlimited cereal hey. all day is a huge deal because you're starving. All you want to do is eat everything in sight. And I'm usually a gym rat. I'm usually big. I went to school to be a trainer. I'm usually 210 pounds. Right now, I'm one So my dude's about to get out of here and get be bigger than me when you see him next time. Help and support once you're there. Pretty much just help and support once I'm there. I just got to make it till this place opens in the morning. I'm hoping they, I, if they opened at 3 a.m., I'd be there at 3 a.m. Okay. And I'm not exaggerating. This is done. This is so, I'm so done with this. It's a pretty good memory you got there, my friend. Look at him go. He's been helping me out all night, writing down numbers for people and shit. Thank you. I'm glad I seen you guys when I walked by because I kind of needed someone to stop me. Because I was literally really? about to go and do some stupid shit. No shit. I've been floating around for about 30 minutes debating on if I was going to do it. And that shouldn't even be crossing my mind. Wow. I'm about to break this fake 50, possibly getting killed in the process. Get I might be dumb, but that looks pretty real to me. He will get shot. He will get shot. You know what I mean? I needed somebody to talk to. I needed somebody to just listen. Listen to what the hell I had to say. Yeah. Man, sometimes wow. it's, sometimes shit works out. Do you believe in God, man? Higher power? I do. I even got chills right now. That's 100% God, dude. Every time before I go out here, I pray in the name of Jesus to put the perfect people in my path that I can help and to be the answer to somebody's prayer. So thank I'm glad you. I was able to help Thank you, tonight, you so man. much. Seriously, I really appreciate it. No problem. I can't bro. thank you enough for that. Hey. Get me with that. What's man. the backside? No. The backside's fake. Oh, oh, the back. Oh, God, you get oh, smoked right there. Bro. This isn't on both sides. My God, dude. Like, you were asking to get smoked. Motion picture used. That's how sick I am, bro. That's how crazy this shit is. Bro. You're trying to pass off a fake 50 motion picture bill. Motion picture use with jointly everything about this. So, when you get well in one more hour, you got to do it all over again. It's horrible. I'm trying to get to detox. I'm going, yeah, going to detox here. in the morning. I'm trying to get to them. Oh, you're going to detox tomorrow. Yeah. So you're trying to get a ride there? Picture. Not no more. Now it's going to say motion PIC. Boom. I'm glad, I'm glad you did that, man. Hey. Yeah. It's gone. That's your old life, bro. Throwing it up in the air. It's horrible. It's horrible. That's why I need to go away. I show him some love in the comments. If you get me your information on where you're at in detox, we'll send you some clothes, some cigarettes, and stuff to help you out.